All right, people, welcome back. More card review. So there have not been a lot of new cards lately. I don't know the the well seems to be drying up. Usually we get like maybe like a couple of cards, new cards every week. Now it's just like silent. And then we finally get this new card. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and be doing this. I was gonna review the Wind Witches, but I'm gonna go ahead and put them on pause. I mean, we'll get to them. Like so, we have like three of them. So it could be the second half of this week, and then you know all of next week we can go ahead and do them. But uh, for now, I'm gonna go ahead and go and talk about the card that is the talk of the town. We're gonna be talking about the Spiritual Beast Tamer Winda. Uh, you know, some people love it, some people hate it, some people think it's great, some people think it's bad, some people think it's broken. So I'm going to give my two cents on it. Now, don't take my two cents as the end-all be-all, because I, I'm going to tell you a secret. I never play Ritual Beast. I know, I know, I know. So, uh, to get my opinion, it's pretty much pointless, but, you know, I'm just going to look at it from a card standpoint. Uh, I processed a lot of different people's videos, from Mega Capo G, the Num Num, to King of Feral and Limp, to, uh, you know, DPYGO, to, you know, just a whole ton of people have uh, given their two cents about this card and whether they think it's crap or good. So, I, I think I have enough information to be like, you know what, let me go ahead and make my decision on whether this card is great or not. Now, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So this is Spiritual Beast Tamer Winda. Yes, Spiritual Beast Tamer Winda. I said that name right. So it's already to a great start because it has Spiritual Beast and Spirit and Tamer. That means that it could be either or. And it being either or and Ritual Beast, that's fantastic. Because, you know, uh, I, well, I've never played the deck. I have played against it a handful of times. And playing against it in a handful of times, uh, you know, sometimes they'll get, like, the Beast or not the Tamer or the Tamer and not the Beast. And they'll just be like, yeah, you know. But this counts as both. So if you have either, either or on the field along with this, then let's go. It's it's contact creating time. So pretty good, pretty good. And uh, I mean, Winda, seeing Winda once again, like that Winda and that Winda and that way. Like, Winda has been on so many cards. She is, she is just all the lore. She really is. She's like a Gusto card, a Shadal card. She's, <laughs> she's a spiritual beast. You know, like, what, she's everything, isn't she? Like She's just popping up everywhere. She's like, hi, I'm, I'm Winda. <laughs> like, mm. So uh, I'm not going to be comparing her to her Shadal counterpart, which is probably, you know, the most obvious of the ones. Uh, I don't think that this girl will ever get the name of Winda. You know, that's the thing. That's the thing. Like, when I mention Winda, what do you think? I generally think should all Winda, you know? So, don't, don't, don't be like, when I mention Winda, you'd be like, oh, you mean Spiritual Beast Tamer Winda? Like, no, 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 I mean should all Winda. You know, if I meant Spiritual Beast Tamer Winda, I'd probably just end up saying, you know, you know, Ritual Beast Winda. <laughs> um... Anyway, let's actually look at her now, because I've been talking about her, but I haven't even looked at the card yet. Now, how am I supposed to determine if the card is good or not if I'm not looking at it? So, she is a wind, obviously. She's a psychic, okay. A fact monster, mm-hmm. Level four, okay. Well, you can't summon her through emergency teleport, but that card's at one anyway. Go ahead and get them uh, ritual beast, um, uh, you know, them hit side hits and hits that they're totally not their fault <laughs> just like wow so not only is my ulti can hawk at one but now my emergency teleporter at one too like yep <laughs> you're getting new support but are you are you gonna get the ulti can hawk higher than one as, as of right now i doubt it you know it doesn't seem like they're really interested in moving anything in the duelist alliance era outside of just keeping burning abyss alive you know it's like nah cleaves you don't get shit necros you don't get shit nurturals you don't get shit ritual beats you don't get shit so that's just how Konami feels right now. That's how you feel. That's really how you feel, Konami. All right. So level four, that's fine. I mean, it's not like the deck doesn't already play level four. Uh, her stats are okay. She has 1600 attack, 800 defense. They might be a little bit better if they were switched, but I mean, that's fine. You know, 1600 attack is about average for level four, and the 1800 buoy is nothing to scoff at either. So uh, let's go ahead and look at this monster effect. So this card in its owner's possession. So you have to be in possession of the card. Uh, it's destroyed by an opponent's card, either by battle or by card effect. You can special summon a ritual beast monster from your deck or extra deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. You can only special summon one ritual beast tamer when does once per turn. Okay, so if you resolve that effect, I mean that's not terrible. It really not. You get to you get to like we floaters floaters especially uh, uh, as of late have been somewhat interesting you know we had like cosmos and they they kind of float of course have burning abyss and stuff like that they float so it's not like floating is bad in this game it's just this 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 first line this first line and your owner's possession is destroyed by an opponent's card 
either by battle or by card effect. Like, why does it have to be your opponent? That's so slow, you know? Maybe if it was just, you know, destroyed by battle by card effect, period, maybe you could throw in some metaphors, go metaphors, ritual beast, and pop this with a card effect by, by your metaphors, and, you know, go ahead and summon, like, the fact that you're floating and summoning from the deck or extra deck, ignoring summon condition, that's amazing. That's amazing. Like, I don't think I've ever seen a card do that, but just the fact that it has to be destroyed by your opponent that's what makes it super slow and it's not like uh if if they see this maybe they'll stop you know maybe they'll, maybe they'll be a little turn like oh my oh my god no it's that bitch window i'm gonna go ahead and stop i don't want you to summon from your deck or extract ignoring summoning conditions but then it's not like there's not answers to this like maybe you can catch someone by surprise set this card and it'd be a, uh, you know 1800 booty that set they kill it and then you you go ahead and get your float on and if not, then I guess you're fine for the rest of the turn. But, you know, there's just so many answers, especially with, like, Utopia the Lightning uh, coming out soon in uh, Europe. I, or is he out? I'm not sure if he's out yet. I'm not sure if the special edition is out yet, but we know he's coming. And everybody who has access to Utopia Lightning, Utopia Lightning doesn't even have to touch any XM material to handle this bitch. You're just like, wah, done. You know? Um, you got Keaton fucking with you. I mean, when you're sitting there with Ritual Beast and you're trying to get your play, it's just... It's like the kind of antithesis. So like, her effect is the antithesis of Ritual Beast. Because when I think Ritual Beast, I think them going first, them, you know, looping the shit out of Ulti Cannon Hawk, getting their traps, getting some resources, building up, making an unbreakable board, and then just sitting on it, you know? And then they'll one up you, then they'll go back into the withdrawal place, hit you up a bit, tag back out, get some more resources, get some more traps, one up you again. How does this card help? Like, this, you would literally be using your normal summon for this. How does this help? That doesn't help that method at all. So, rip on that. And of course, how slow it is. You have them destroyed by your opponent, by your battle, by card effect. Like maybe they'll throw a Regeki at you, but, you know, it's like, oh, oh, yeah. Either it's a set monster and they're trying, gonna try to, like, go for a game or something, they'll throw the Regeki at you. But if they see it face up on the field, they're not gonna throw the Regeki at you. So, I don't know. And summoning a Ritual Beast from your deck, actually, that's not just compact, but, you know, one of the main monsters that you might summon, that Ulti Guy Pelio. That 3200 monster, yeah, he won't have his effect, so he'll just be at 3200 body, which isn't terrible. I mean, in this format right now, I don't think there's really anything that summons out something higher than 3000 consistently. You know, it's like maybe some Blurs players play Chaos Max, but you know, it's like what Blue Eyes alternative can pop your ass, so yeah, watch out for that. But Cosmos, I mean, I'm not sure if Cosmos are really gonna play Dark Planet. Maybe, I mean, spells are pretty predominant in this, this format, so maybe, uh, I don't know, PK Fire or something like that. Like, there's not too many cards that predominantly gets over 3,000, so I'm mean, a 3,200 beater, it's nothing to scoff at, but I mean, you really want that effect. That effect is really good, and summoning that through this will, like, you won't get your effect, so. Uh, if anything, it might be okay to uh, possibly get set up with more plays, maybe float into herself for a second turn play if you didn't open up too hot, you know? Uh, like I said, you can run multiple windows, because it doesn't say that you can't summon herself, she just can only be special summoned once per turn. So, who's to say that I can't set her, you kill her, she dies, I use her effect, summon her, who is a spiritual beast tamer, which means that she's either or, then my turn, I just summon either a different tamer or a different beast, and then bam, get the contact on, you know, start going off, so. Yeah, in that sense, she's actually pretty good. Or you can summon a different Ritual Beast monster from your deck, maybe like your, your Pedophan or something like that, get that play set up. Or maybe you can summon your Ulti Canahawk, and if you have things to tag out to get that ball rolling. Or, you know, like, there's a lot of things you could do with it. It's just, like I said, it's just a little bit slow. It really is. But overall, I mean, Ritual Beast getting a monster who floats... Not terrible, you know, I wouldn't say that this card is just straight up ass booty, you know, it has it has a spot in the deck, I definitely do think that it has a spot in the deck, I would play it, I'd probably play it, maybe two or three, maybe, depends, because that whole floating into itself play, I think that might be one of the most awful plays you could pull off with this, so the last thing you need is to only play two, you know, draw into both of them and then, you know, set, but then, actually that'd still be good, because she can't see the ore, so you could just, you know, play her, set her, she would die, she would tag out into something else, you're from deck or extra deck, then you would just summon her, the respect the other one that you drew so maybe well, two two would be okay you know, two uh just how because of how flexible she is with her name and her effect uh she's a good card she's a good card so you know the, the other people were saying like oh my god this card is just straight ass like it doesn't make ritual beast top tier shit like and i think that's the problem with it with with people are like oh my god this card sucks it's not when we need it it's because 
No, this will this make you, you know, ritual beast, you know, crawl out of the grave, out of the dual cemetery, and be like, yeah, we're back in, you know, we're in the matter. Hell no, hell to no fucking no. You know, like if you're even thinking about playing ritual beast competitively, don't. All right, Solemn Strike just got reprinted. Everybody's gonna have access to it, and oh, you get fucked by Solemn Strike. So no, 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 no. no. Ulti cannot. It's still at one. Uh, emergency teleport is one, so you got an indirect hit, which hurts as well. Um, no, this isn't your time. This isn't your time. And this, and this card, this one card right here, and then I think there's another Ritual Beast card that you got. This isn't going to help you be top to your shit, so. Just hold off. Just hold off. Maybe after a year or two, Konami will let up on your ulti Hawks. Maybe Soul and Strike won't be out there forever, you know, and then maybe you can uh, make your way, squeeze your way into the battle. But for right now, just hold off, hold off. So, is this card crap? No. Is this card good? Yeah. No, yeah, I'd say it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Especially in name. Especially in name. So, tell me what you guys think about uh, Spiritual Beast Tamer window in the comments below. Like, like I said, what do I know? I'm, I'm, I've never played Ritual Beast in my life, so. So, I hope that you guys enjoyed this card review. Like I said, we're going to be moving on to the Wind Witches. Unless something catches my eye, something new comes out, and I'm like, oh, yeah, i got to review that. But outside of that, I think we'll be moving on to Wind Witches, because, you know, that's going to be kind of important to talk about. Because maybe we could see, like, a, a popping up of a new meta deck with that Speed Droid Wind Witch combo. So, I don't know. Maybe. So, Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this card review. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.